Thank you for tuning in for our part two video on equipment for wing foiling. Last week we talked about boards. So if you haven't watched that one, jump in there, get information on what board you're gonna need. Because if you don't have the right board, it's not really gonna matter what wings you're using. This week we're gonna talk about wings, mast, the hydrofoil underneath the board, uh, what's gonna work best for wing foiling, learning, uh, and progressing with that. So let's jump into it and we'll get you all set up for your first wing foiling session. As with all of our videos, you can click in the eye icon in the upper right hand corner. That's gonna take you to our knowledge center and our website uh, where you get more in depth blog, uh, written blog, on the website as well as links and knowledge center to our other videos and blogs within our website so jump in there and check it out so moving on next we're going to talk about mast length uh, so mast length is really important when you're wing foiling too short and you're going to be cavitating all the time you're bouncing back down onto the water and that's going to really ruin your efficiency ruin your time out there and keep you from getting long fun fast rides like you want to on your wing foil. So ideal length for most riders is gonna be somewhere between 28 and 36 inches. Uh, typically, if you're wondering, should I go shorter, longer? Longer tends to be better um, as a general rule, unless you're in shallow water or a weedy spot, something like that, really where the, the length of the mass is gonna cause you to not be able to ride very easily. Um, now, why you ask? Well, number one reason, is that you're going faster than you would be normally on, on like a wave paddleboard foiling or surf foiling. Um, similar to how kiteboarding and windsurfers lots of times are using longer masts. So they're going faster, they can't adjust for the pitch going over waves and through chop as quickly. Um, so naturally they need a longer mast to help deal with that and give them a little bit more uh, margin for error on that pitch. Secondly, you're going through waves, not riding on a wave. When you're riding on a wave, the mass depth, uh, as it corresponds to the water, remains fairly constant. You'll have bumps and wavers in the, in, the wave, in the wave, but for the most part, it's remaining fairly similar um, as you're traversing through the water. Um, but when you're going over waves, like you can on a wing foil, going back upwind or through waves, you're going to need to change pitch over the waves and chop. Um, and also, like I had said in my previous point, at a faster speed. So that's going to need, again, more margin for error as you pass through you know, foam and chop and waves and just get through that stuff. Having a little bit more mass there is good to be able to do that without either, either cavitating your wing or again, touching down. Lastly, you're going to need a longer mast than what you might surf or sup foiling because you're generally using larger wings. Those of us out there wing foiling ideally are using a little bit higher aspect and larger foils so we can get up on foil sooner and don't need as much wing power to remain on foil and stay upwind or, or cruising around. So naturally, wider wings as you're turning them have more tendency to cavitate at the surface of the water because of that extra width than a narrower wing would. So when you have those, a little bit more mast is going to give you more opportunity to make those leaning turns, especially as you're moving through waves and chop. So those are some of the reasons you want a longer mast. Here at the shop, we're typically riding between 28 and 32 inch masts, um, but also up to 36, depending on the brand and where we are and who's riding and the conditions and such. Um, but we find for most people in most conditions, that kind of middle of the road tends to work pretty good, uh, unless you're in some outlying variable where you're riding really fast or big or choppy um, or really wide wings that would really cause you to have to go super long. Lastly, in your hydrofoil, which wings you choose to ride are really going to affect your wind range performance, your speed performance, your maneuverability. So a lot of the uh, meat and potatoes of the performance and the usability is gonna have to do with the wings as well. 
Um, without the correct wing, you're either going to have too much lift and, and too much stability where you can't turn or maneuver fast enough, or you're not going to have enough lift and you'll never be able to actually take off and ride. We find here at the shop most average sized riders are going to ride something between let's say 1500 and, and 2400 centimeters squared. Most people kind of falling in the middle there depending on the design of the wing. Around 2000 centimeters squared seems to be the sweet spot. Now everybody thinks oh bigger wing why don't you go bigger you can ride with less power it's easier it's bigger. Well not necessarily. The bigger your wing the more drag it has the less maneuverable it is and when you're up on foil with the wing dragging you around in the currents you need to be able to adjust your foil and maneuver appropriately to remain on foil otherwise you just tip over or, or get dragged over uh, or make mistakes that you can't recover from. Also smaller foils have a higher top end speed so when you're moving faster you can create more apparent wind like you would on a kiteboarding kite or a windsurfer. So the more apparent wind you can build, the easier you can coast through lulls, the more speed you can build um, in general, just the more fun you can have really. So what wing designs are we liking best? That's the uh, golden question. Around here at the shop, like I had said, something around 2,000 centimeters squared has really been a favorite. The Maliko 200 from GoFoil is a really great wing to get started. You don't need all that much board speed. It'll pop right up on foil. It's real user friendly. I would call it stable, but not overly stable. Um, it's, it's fairly high aspect, so it still has a great top end speed. Um, and, and it's just a very easy to learn with, fun wing uh, to do. You know, some other foils similar to that Maliko 200 would be the Nash Jet 2000 or from 2019, it would be the XXL front wing. Um, additionally, Slingshot Infinity 76, Infinity 84, or even the Infinity 99 for you really heavy guys um, are some great choices as well. Uh, as well as Armstrong, a Lift 250 is phenomenal. Um, any of those foils really that are going to give you good low end lift but still have respectable high end speed um, and, and maneuverability are, are really what you're looking for. Again, if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to us at the shop for a, a more direct or a more accurate recommendation for your particular instance, uh, your skill set, your weight, your riding style, your local area, and we can certainly pr uh, provide that. Moving forward performance-wise, going from the Maliko 200, which is here, um, very big, you know, quite thick, um, mellow anhedral, just good, wide speed range on this one to GoFoil's new designs uh, for downwinding and wing foiling the GL series. You can tell, you know, the difference here, we're talking about a similar wingspan between a 200 and a two, or uh, excuse me, a 180 here. Um, but overall surface area is a little higher aspect and thinner, flatter, just more efficient um, as with the GL series, they're going to be more concerned with your top speeds, your speed range, um, really maximizing your efficiency here. Um, so you're, you're going to have to pump this one up a little faster. You're going to have to work a little harder on the low end, but you're going to gain more speed and efficiency on the top end of things, which can be kind of cool. Uh, the GL series, I would say, is for your more experienced foiler, intermediate to advanced foiler, uh, who knows how to use this type of high aspect design uh, to their advantage um, rather than waiting for it to lift them out of the water. You gotta pump it up a little sooner and build that speed to gain that stability. And it's a little bit more uh, agile in the pumping, um, in the pump maneuvering in the pitch. Um, so you gotta be on top of that a little bit more. So if you're looking for you know, higher performance, higher top speeds, Look for something like a higher aspect foil that's going to still give you lift on the low end but expand that top uh, end of the speed range. As I said before, the eye icons up there in the upper right hand corner if you want to jump into our knowledge center to read more about this subject and see similar videos. If you have any additional questions, you can feel free to ring us at the shop, use our live chat. Of course, always you can make comment below. We do our best to keep up with answering those questions. If you appreciated the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to our channel, 
and uh, we can give you some more Foil Fridays videos to let you know what's uh, the newest and give you some tips on foil boarding. This has been Tucker with Matt Kiteboarding. We'll see you next time.